Rishi Sunak spent years plotting, conniving to become Prime Minister of our cursed country. He turned on the man he propped up and told us over and over again was the best man for the job, Boris Johnson, because he thought he was actually the best guy to run the shop. And he really brought into his own hype. And to be fair, a lot of the commentary at were tugging the guy off. Sorry for the pretty graphic imagery there. Uh, but a lot of commentary at, because of the furlough scheme and all the rest, something which other rich countries had to introduce to stop the collapse of the economic and social fabric during a once in a century uh, pandemic. Because of all that, they were all, a lot of the commentary at some very gullible people going, oh, he's great. Oh, Rishi, you'd be great as Prime Minister. Why didn't you go for it? Why don't you become Prime Minister? He bought into all that. He got all that hype. And... You know, he kind of developed, I suppose, this kind of like serious, moderate, technocratic kind of vibe. Now, all of that is nonsense because this guy is a right-wing ideologue with way too much money. I mean, he's got, what, twice the riches of the king. Um, who isn't fit to be a junior minister, let alone run the country? He's disingenuous, dishonest and pretty tetchy, as we'll see, uh, to boot. Now, let's just listen to this because it's actually wound me up quite a lot. It is getting to the point now where I have this relationship with Rishi Sunak, not words I thought I'd ever utter, so maybe I should just clarify that. It is getting to the point where I, 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 I'm struggling, actually, on a daily basis to do my job, which is involves listening to a lot of the absolute horseshit this guy churns out. So let's just go and listen. Look, you know, yes, they, they, they are seven, they have good, let, yeah, let me yeah, just yeah. get this figure out, Premise. Yeah. It was 7.2 million when you came to yeah, office. Yeah, now it's 7.9, give or take. It, it, yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah. You, it's but going if you look the wrong at, way. Yeah, right. but if you look at what happened, there, I'll just be totally honest with everybody. If you look at what happened, we were actually making progress. We eliminated the number of uh, two-year waiters. People are waiting a really long time. Uh, we practically eliminated the number of people waiting one and a half years. But the reason, and we were making progress on bringing the overall numbers down, what happened? We had right. industrial action. Okay. We've got strikes. Now, and look, I've, I've taken a very firm but fair point of view. We've accepted recommendations from independent pay review bodies. I'm delighted that the nurses and a million other NHS workers accepted the government's re uh, pay offer. Yes. And they're working really hard to deliver for patients. But unfortunately, we still have groups of people who are not doing that and they're striking. And that is a reason that the waiting lists are going up. It's L as simple as that. I just want to be honest with you. Yes, they are okay. going up. That's the reason they're going up. It's not because we're not putting more money in or doing lots of different things, which no doubt we okay. can talk about we on are. the show. I'll go and take a jump, honestly. I mean, firstly, if we take just like the first chunk of the accursed conservative reign in office, which we have suffered now for 13 years, so the first six years, David Cameron and George Osborne, they subjected the National Health Service to the longest squeeze as a proportion um, of the economy since it was founded back in 1948. Now, what actually that meant in practice, when you take into account an ageing population and growing population numbers, is per patient funding in that period actually went down. Um, Per patient funding. Yes, per patient funding went down. Now, that's an important point to make because they said, well, actually, we ring fence the NHS funding. It's actually going up, unlike all the other budgets they hacked to pieces with pretty calamitous consequences for the country. But that's deceptive because you've got to take into account who we're talking about in terms of patients. So if you get more ageing patients, if you get a growing population, in practice, that meant per patient funding went down in real terms. And they did things like slash the care budget, which also put pressure on the NHS. So you've already got that, for example. Um, the former health secretary, Jamie Hunt, has essentially conceded there was insufficient staffing when we went into the pandemic. So you could say, well, look, we had this pandemic. That's not their fault. Even I'm not going to <laughs> accuse the Tories um, of creating the COVID-19 uh, um, uh, virus. But the NHS was woefully underprepared for a catastrophe to hit it, which is, of course, what happened in 2020. So you had these long-running problems, an under-resourced National Health Service, and also a lack um, of staff. I'm not even mentioning the fact they introduced this horrendous top-down reorganisation, which is an attempt to marketise, to extend private sector uh, control within the National Health Service back in 2012, the Health and Social Care Act, under the former Health Secretary Andrew Lansley. That legislation was three times longer than the legislation that created the NHS in the first place. Anyway, that introduced all sorts of complexities and actually bureaucracy into the NHS, which didn't exactly help. But then when we talk about the impact of the real terms pay cuts, 
that the Conservatives have imposed and why this has contributed so much to waiting lists. Um, take nurses, they've suffered a five grand or so real terms pay cut since the Tories came to power. Paramedics, six and a half thousand pounds. That causes, in large part, a crisis in retention and recruitment, um, which is why we have around 50,000 nurse vacancies. For now, these are just some of the factors. For Rishi Sunak to turn around and blame the very workers he has himself, in very big measure, driven to strike action because of the calamitous fall in their real terms pay, to blame them for what his party has done to the NHS is actually nauseating. It's physically nauseating. The front on this guy, he has caused, in a big, big way, or contributed in a very big way, in a very meaningful way, to a recruitment and retention crisis. I didn't even mention the cutting of the, of the nurse ba uh, um, bursary, which the Tories did. They got rid of that nursing uh, bursary. That didn't help, did it? No, obviously not. So we've had all of those policies, and then, because of the nurses, the doctors, the health staff, who go on strike to try and save the NHS, knowing that the cuts in the real terms pay is what is causing this crisis and retention and recruitment, he blames them instead. I mean, look, the fact, you know, I mean, if you look at the survey, at the moment, about a third of GPs want to quit within five years. That does worse to come. Mass demoralisation and also overwork for those who stay, because if you've got so many vacancies, that means, obviously, you get more work, overstretched um, workers in terms of those who are actually still in the workforce. Let's just listen to him being taken up by a junior doctor on this. I'm a junior doctor and I've been working as a junior doctor for the last 10 years now. How do you think your refusal to negotiate with us improves morale or standards of care? Uh, over a million NHS workers have accepted the government's pay deal, many of them on salaries and incomes far lower than consultants and indeed Olivia and her colleagues. That's just the reality of it. Let's get a quick response from a, a woman who's on the front line. Quick response, Olivia, if you would, before we move on. Olivia? I think it's amazing that we're blaming the increasing in waiting lists on doctors um, going on strike. Um, you're losing staff because we're undervalued and it's not just doctors, it's everyone. We're all leaving. A happy workforce is your responsibility. You're the Prime Minister. You're the government. Your staff aren't happy. That's your fault. And ultimately, that's not good for patients because retaining staff is one of the bedrocks of making sure that you have good patient safety. You cannot keep the NHS running with the staff shortages that it has. Right. And to keep us here, you have to keep us happy. That is your job. Right. None of us are happy. I would, I would just say, Olivia, right? so if you look, when you have the time, please go look at the long-term workforce plan. It was, it's I've the NHS. It. I've read it. I've read it. I get it. I, it's great. I love the fact that you're bringing in tons of new people, but there's going to be no one there to train or educate or supervise them. And you cannot be safe without senior staff on the wards training, educating so, and supervising. So, so there's, three, right, there's, three, there's three parts of the plan, actually. So one is to train more people. The second one is to retain more people. So there's a whole section of the plan about improving retention, which I agree with you is important. And the third part of it is reforming how we work. And I think right. you said you're working in A&E. It's about one of the things we're introducing are uh, uh, anaesthetist associates, which are a new role which will help uh, provide high quality care to people. But look, fundamentally, you and I are not going to agree because your union is asking for a 35% pay rise. I don't think that's reasonable. I don't think that's affordable. I don't think that's fair. Right. And millions of others have accepted the recommendations. And I would urge your union to do the same. That's just offensive. I mean, again, when he keeps going on about the 35%, oh, no, after 35% in pay increase, that's so unreasonable. What junior doctors are actually asking for in practice is to have their pay restored to the level that it was when the Tories came to power. It's not what they're, you know, it's like, it's easy to portray that as, oh, this is so unreasonable. 35% uh, pay cut, uh, pay rise on what planet? Who, which government could possibly agree to that? All they're asking for is a pay restoration. They're asking to go back to where they were in 2010. And that would take a 35% pay increase. Realistically, are they going to get all of that 35%? No. But if they at least had a government to meet them a bit halfway, then they would have a partially restored uh, pay, but it wouldn't go back to where it was in 2010. In fact, it would still probably be significantly lower. But if you want... An NHS, which is world class, which saves lives because the more you undervalue your staff, the more you get Australia, which is heavily targeting our staff to recruit them instead. And then you get a depleted workforce. 
you get less staff looking after patients and then more staff uh, uh, leaving, demoralized, and you get more patients dying. You get more patients being ill. That's the consequences of what Rishi Sunak has done. How dare he scapegoat our overworked NHS workers who he's driven to strike action? How dare he? And listen to how tetchy he is as well. Do you know it's like all the way through? I sound tetchy and angry. I'm not the Prime Minister. I, it's my job to get angry at these people. He, on the other hand, you can tell, he's not enjoying it, is he? He can see his polling is catastrophic. Everything he does has not turned it around. His popularity is sinking further. And he's heading, quite rightly, for electoral disaster. But don't let him get away with this. Don't get, let him get away with trying to scapegoat the very people who he applauded, didn't he? Do you remember he clapped them on balconies or, you know, out, outside number 10 and all the rest of it? He applauded them, called them heroes, and then imposed real terms pay cuts on them and then, and then tried to blame them for the crisis he caused in the NHS. That guy is a disgrace. He's no better than Boris Johnson. In some ways, actually, he's significantly worse. I need to get rid of him. Please like, subscribe. Do support on patreon.com. I'll see you in a bit.